you start, you need to download this month's tutorial files. Drag one of the rough cement bitmaps into your Zara document. Now promptly delete it. This will store it here in, in the bitmap gallery and we'll use it from there in a second. So let's go over here, drag and draw a rectangle and this is going to be our background on top of which we're going to build our text effect. With this rectangle selected, click and select your bitmap from the bitmap gallery and click the fill button. And now let's take the fill tool and make sure this says repeating tile and let's adjust our fill until we get something something that I like. All right, that looks good to me. Now with our bitmap fill adjusted, we're ready to start building our text effect. So to begin, of course, we're gonna need some text. Now I'm using a free font that you can download from fontsquirrel.com. It's called Liquidism. And it's kind of a funky looking, kind of a drippy font, drippy looking font. We're going to make this nice and big so we can see what we're doing here. And I am just gonna click somewhere on here and type. Okay, there's our watery text. Now we're going to apply a transparency to this. We're going to go in with the transparency tool and in this drop down list here we're going to choose an enhanced transparency. Now don't panic, our text is still there. It's just turned it into a special transparency. And what this does is allows you to use a vector shape or in our case text and it kind of creates a mask and we can use any of the photo tools and the adjustments will show up just on the area that the text masks out. So let's go down and I'm going to drop the brightness down and we're going to drop it down to about maybe about 38, 40, around thereabouts. And this is already giving our rough concrete a wet look. Well, we don't want wet. We want water. We want it look like our concrete has been water sealed and the water has beat it up and not absorbed into it. So to do that, I'm going to clone this text, Control K on your keyboard. And I am going to leave this layer with the enhanced transparency but we're gonna go back to our photo tool and this time I'm going to adjust the brightness up. We're gonna go quite a ways up, about maybe 30, 31. And now you can see we've got a white, very bright effect happening here. We're gonna go up here to the feathering. I'm going to use the feathering slider and I'm gonna feather this down. I don't wanna overdo it, about like this is good. If you want, I will we can type in about 6.2 pixels and hit enter. All right, the next step to doing this, is it still looks pretty flat. I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna pull it over to the left and up. And this gives it almost a bit of a three dimensional look, but it's missing something. It needs some reflections. Now, I have got a pretty nifty way of doing this. To do these reflections and still keep these reflections as edible text. And how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna use Notepad you asked to do this. So, to start, we need another layer of text. So again, Control K. And this time I am going to remove the enhanced transparency and I'm gonna make this white. Now I'm gonna quickly make some changes to some of the settings on this text. For starters, I'm gonna change the feathering and I'm going to change this to about 3.6 pixels. Hit enter to set my change and we're gonna open up the profile sliders. We're gonna profile this edge. We're gonna fine tune the edges of the uh, reflection. Start by typing in 
0.52 in the top box. Hit tab and I'm going to point type in minus 0.26 in the bottom box and again hit enter to set my changes. I can dismiss this. All right, so that's one awful looking reflection, isn't it? Well, we're going to fix that. This is where the opacity mask comes in. So I'm going to clone this layer again, control K again, make it black. And I'm going to pull this over to the right and down. See sort of what's happening here. And control X to cut that to the clipboard. Select the white text, right click, paste, paste opacity mask. Now you can see our reflection isn't really showing up. That's because we need to adjust the opacity mask. And the quickest and easiest way to do that is to open up the page and layer gallery, page and layers. We're going to expand the opacity mask group, expand the opacity mask, select the text line inside the opacity mask, hold down the alt key and nudge it over. One, two, over to the right, one, two, down. And maybe we'll do one more to the right, one more down. No, I think that's a little too much. Two to the right, two down. And this is beginning to look a lot more like watery text. You can see the background underneath it looks pretty cool. But I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do next is I want to group all of this so that I can move it around as one. But I want to be able to edit this text. As part of this is making this text editable. And to do that, I am going to go up here to the Arrange menu, and I'm going to apply a soft group. Now we're going to just give this a little bit of a darker tint. And I'm going to do this with a shadow. So I'll select the Shadow tool, select the Wall Shadow. Now I'm going to drop the blurring down. And I'm going to bump up the transparency because we want this to be quite a subtle effect. So somewhere between, I would say, 85 and 90 percent like that. So now it's given it just a hint of a tinting. We've got a nice reflection going. And because it's a soft group, we can take our text tool and we can edit this text. Not bad, huh? And because this text uses the enhanced transparency, you can quite easily change the background. If I pull it over here onto the, you can see it's still clear. You can see any background behind it. I could easily change the uh, background using any kind of a background from my fills gallery. I got some nice wood ones down here. You drag and drop that in there. Now I got a nice wood background with water on it. We better clean that up before it leaves a mark. <laughs> Thanks for watching.